Paul, please. Yeah, I would like to uh, uh, add a spot for a new business at the end and then uh, for the mayor to speak um, before public speaking. So we want a new business at the, the just before journey? Yep. Do you mind who's present? Do you mind if that go before additional council discussion? This one. New business before additional council discussion? And then, uh, where do you want the mayor? Uh, immediately after this. Okay, so, so the first thing you can do. Are there any other yeah. changes in addition to Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. President, yes, I've got a resolution to stand with the striking workers that was worked on by our and I'm asking that they can go after the mayor. Okay. That would be available to skip us to this resolution and see what we do. That would be clear. And okay. Are there any other requests for changes and or additions to the agenda? Let me double check something. Is that um the is the city attorney where Angela go? Angela, this uh recreational marijuana thing for second reading. What's that on the council agenda? Yeah. Yeah. That's where it's at, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's done. Yeah. And through done through you, Mr. President, to them. Okay, so we are deal with that out there. Yes. Yeah. Anything else? Any other there? agenda changes and or additions? Hearing none, roll call. Oh, wait, okay. I thought there's there's three add-ons. Um, we got some add-ons. Right. Three add-on resolutions. Mr. Mr. Um, President, yes, sir. as we get them, well, I will. We're going to add them to what the resolution. Let's see if we can get them now. The first one is um, resolution one nine uh, eight one five nine. So this is the one, Mr. President Mayor. Yes, yes, this is the resolution to approve settlement between City of Flint and USAA for <laughs> Ashley Benny. I'm gonna do that as add on number one. Y'all yes, see it? Everybody got it. It's mm -hmm. a settlement. What would be add on sure. number two? Yeah. Is that the one y'all got, Mr. Yeah. Rick? That's the yeah. settlement. That's no, we got no. Okay, then add on number two would be the resolution to approve settlement of Jimmy W. Dow. Y'all see that? Yes. That would be the add on number two. Jimmy W. Dollar versus City of Flint Workers' Compensation. And then add on number three. Add on number three would be um, resolution to convert Black Avenue to a one way. From a one way. From a one way. Black is a one way. Black needs to be a two-way, man. Mm -hmm. So that would be add on number one, two, and three. And Mr. President, I would ask that they come um, with the resolution. The resolution to stand with the strike workers, I'll wait on that one until we look at it in here. Um, we'll see what happens. I'll do that later. So I would that would be the other agenda change to add the add-ons. 
Is that another add on? Yes. Add them on. This would be add on number four. This is a resolution to approve the state of the city address to be held at the Capitol Theater on Monday. Let's call that add on number four. Did you pick my uh, bottle? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't preclude you from having any and all that on if you want. Did, did you do my bottle? Uh, <laughs> Alright, sure. Yeah. 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 Any other changes and or additions to the agenda? Yes, sir. The only other, it's not really a change. We do have, um, for your ordinances, the stormwater one that we were waiting for corrections, we do have the corrected version to switch out. I'm just waiting for the copies on the machine. So when you get to that point, I'll have the, the correct one. It, there's no changes. We just, the numbers have been okay. um, Mr. President, through you to Davina, or if you know, Mr. President, is that on the special affairs agenda? That's the one being referred to on the special affairs agenda, so we want it on there. You right. say it's corrected, and so we can maybe move it. Okay. Yes. So it's on. Yeah. Yeah. Any other changes and or additions? Roll call, please. Do we need a roll call on that, or just Oh, we committed. Yeah, we committed. We did it. We committed. We, did it. we, did it. we, committed. we can do it. Okay. okay. All in favor of the changes and or additions to the agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same side. All right. Uh, this brings us to the first thing on the agenda, which is uh, Mayor Weaver. It's good to have you here. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Would you like to sit down and join us? You can sit up. I promise you, you're in there. It, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, actually, the I mean, the reception, is good. the reception is good, but... And first, let me say to um, Madam Clerk, Mr. President, and council members, thank you for adjusting this agenda for me. We have some things. See? Yeah, I want to see my agenda. It don't matter. You are welcome to sit by and judge if you like. No, 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 no. And I'm glad to have the chief and Detective Bruce with me because we wanted to talk about something regarding public safety. Yes. First of all, if I may, Mr. President, as we met and we hashed out the mayor coming up, she's here, and so that settles some of that, and so that's part of this as well. And I wanted to talk with, with everybody because one of the things we've been talking about, and I know this has been an issue not just for myself and the chief, but all of us, and probably everybody in the room as we talk about how we look at public safety and address public safety concerns. And when I have been talking really with just different leaders around different, you know, around the state and around the country and how they have addressed some things, and I know it's something that the chief has kind of put in place. I'm just presenting this uh, because I want you all to have time to look at this and then we can have some more conversation about it. And I know this, I, I felt like this fell in line with something that the chief was doing as we talked about using camera surveillance. You know, I do want to just say that he's going to get back with some limited resources. And so this was a way for us to use resources and technology even more as we address public safety. And so I was looking at some of the other cities around and some of the things they've done, and he's done it on a voluntary basis, and he wanted to put an ordinance in place. Uh, as certain types of businesses are in the city and as certain ones come into the city, uh, we were talking about the security cameras. Uh, one of the things that we've noticed is, and, and the chief, you can talk about the certain kinds of businesses, or you can as well, um, Attorney Wheeler, I'm not sure who wants to do that piece, 
but what they said they had noticed was a reduction in crime as we've had different kinds of businesses hooked up to like our intel center where the where the chief and the police can see things in real time and address it and so that was something that we wanted to do and we wanted to make it an ordinance instead of on a voluntary basis and so i had talked with i've met with attorney builder i've met with uh, the chief of police, I've met with the council president, and I've met with council committees to talk about some of these things. And I've even had some conversation with some of the businesses around the city. And I think I, I talked with some that were actually, I mean, like I said, all around the city, but I have had extra conversation with some of the businesses that are in your war council maze just to get a feel to see what they thought about this. And I know as we talked about some of the businesses, they could be check cashing, uh, cell phones, what were some of the other ones? Point or, or, firearms, firearms, right. uh, just, just different ones that have a higher tendency for somebody to want to do something there. And they, exactly, exactly those kinds of places. And they were talking about the way they do it and where they have the cameras situated. And I don't know if you want to talk about that More piece, than, and then I yeah. would like the chief to talk about the impact that he thinks it will have, because they've said that not only has it helped reduce crime, but it's also driven up business for those, the, the businesses that, have, that are part of this. This don't include the facial recognition stuff, do it. It might. It might be on the business and the location. Yeah, I got we it. Haven't, and that we got don't it. have that in it here. Ain't in no, here. that's not in here. Somebody may already have yeah, we'll that, but that's not that, part of but this is that's not part of the requirement we have. Stuff. Right. We'll right. We're just talking about the cameras things. that we have and that I think what is that your green eye? The cat eye. The cat eye? Yes. Okay. It's what he's already doing. In the yeah, city, but, but now it's like on a volunteer basis. If the business want to get into it, then you know we can tap into their needs. If they allow us to tap into their camera system, um, that's the way the cat eye is now. And it doesn't cost the city anything. It's the individual business pays for their own camera system. You know, and, and but it has to be our specs in order for it to be able to come into our feed. Right. Councilman Green, uh, since there was already a question asked, I'd like to ask him. I don't. What is the problem at hotel or motels? I don't, I'm not aware of that problem. Uh, well, I know the lodging I own has no problems like this. Well, I, I can answer that question. Okay. Uh, up and down um, Miller Road and Pearson Road, you know, most of the drug dealers are coming to the city. That's where they set up shop at, those mm -hmm. hotels outlining on the outskirts of the city. So they put hotels in there because that's a common uh, location for people like that to, um, to uh, Mm -hmm. They're on the on the west side of the three one. Yeah, I don't the one you're talking about. And and I'm curious on the one. And you're right. They're talking about certain certain times. Mr. President, oh. yeah, through you to Councilman Briggs, not your nicest place. That's a different place. <laughs> I've been there. That's a different place. But I would like uh, Angela Wheeler to speak to what some of those are. Right, and and like I said, this is. Really, businesses in which there is a likelihood there could be something um, that could go on. And so, like I so said, this is the extra protection and extra safety taking measures to the residents, and something that I think really complements what Chief Johnson has been doing. And so, um, some of the requirements um, through here are to have. Um, uh, cameras at the counter and, and, and register area at the, the entry and exit or entry and exit where the, they can see the face of the person going in and also the parking lot. It also talks about lighting at the location. So these are extra precautions that are put in place to make sure that it keeps the residents safe. And uh, one good thing about this, there's a lot of good things about this, but one, in addition to that, there's an exemption built in. So if somebody has like extremely high resolution cameras that are even be above and beyond um, the chief's um, um, criteria, then the chief and or his designee has the discretion to grant an exemption. So that's within his authority to be able to do that. In addition to that, it gives business owners, um, and it gives them a year after it's been put into place to get everything put into place at their, at their place of business. So this is really a, a good opportunity to continue to provide safety and to really complement the program um, that, that the, the chief of police has put into place. 
right right now we're fighting crime in the city with technology. Um, but it's not boots on the ground like it used to be because everybody in the room knows that we're so limited on the resources. We, uh, you know, we have about five officers on the street and then give a shit. You know, and, and we used to be 30 officers on the street, you know, and on any given shift. And those officers were working eight hour shifts and now they're working 12 hour shifts. You know, so the technology that we're using now, it, it supports us and it's guiding us and it's actually leading us, you know, and, and, and I, I, I can let maybe both speak on the fact of how the technology is actually being um I can let him speak on how the how how it's actually affecting and how we get our crime stats and stuff. I mean, we do it like that through the uh, intelligence center. Um, the reason why our stats is the way they are now, and our numbers are the way they are, is because we can we can almost dictate what a crime is going to occur before it occurs just by following the trend. Uh, and we have four analysts in this center now, where before we didn't have anybody. And this is at no cost to the city. You know, we we got, went out and got grants and found grants that actually is covering our analysts. And, and I'll let him speak on analysts, but uh, their job and what they're doing, they're, they're sitting in there and they're crime mapping and a million other things that they're doing in that uh, intelligence center. And that's how we put our, um, um, that's how we give the directions to our officers and where we want to uh, place our officers, the five officers that we have. You know, that's, where we, that's, that's how we place them. That's how we figure out which way they're going and where they're gonna go because we're following the crime trend. Even before it gets to the point where somebody calls for a police officer, we're able to have that officer there beforehand because we already see it's going in that direction. And that's exactly how we've been fighting crime to a certain extent. Councilwoman Smith. Um, I'd like to say that on the face of it, this sounds like a really good idea. Um, so thank you for bringing this to us. Um, I do have some questions, however. I watch a lot of the uh, English uh, detective stories and they always have CCTV footage available <laughs> immediately and uh, we don't seem to have much of that here. But here's some of my questions. Um, like I say, this is just quickly on the face of this. Um, it talks in here on page five about inspections. Um, who will be doing those inspections and will there be a fee to the business for that inspection? Jeff yeah, will be responsible for the uh, purchase of the camera. He's responsible to make sure the camera is actually um, uh, going. Um, you no, know, they'll be responsible to make sure their cameras actually will be able to network with our system at their cost, not ours, not at the cost of the, on the cost of the city. But yes, the point of information. Which point? Ms. Fields, what page do you see that? Five. At the bottom. I it's page five. Okay. I'll see Okay, because my thought is just like we have a fee for rental inspections, although we are not providing rental inspections, um, and it's voluntary, I don't know why um, we wouldn't try to raise some revenue yeah, that, that's by right. having inspections because one of my adjacent questions is who will monitor to make sure all of these businesses that are listed, who's going to go out and monitor that? But, if, but if, if, I, if, I, if I could, I think I read in there somewhere where there will be, I don't think it's in this area, but I think, yeah, yeah we, we haven't started, actually, we haven't put a fee on our services. For these businesses, but that's coming. That's something that that's coming. Need. That's something we need to talk about with council and see how we want to put a fee on this and how we want to charge for the use of um, the Intel Center. Because right now they're getting that service free. The whole city is going to be actually, because we, we actually put in a grant for 300 cameras and we're working on that right now to secure the funds for 300 cameras going around the city. If that happens, um, that's really going to open up the Intel Center to where. Um, these other small businesses is probably going to have to start paying some kind of fee that they do for the services that they do for them. So. Well, I think before this gets anywhere near finalized, it's something that we could investigate. Uh, can I continue with my questions? A couple of questions. Yeah, oh, about four. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I see in here on page, uh, let's see, what page is it? How many? They have to have on page four B. They have to have a minimum of three high-resolution surveillance cameras. Um, and I think 
I don't, I didn't read through carefully enough, but I don't think, I think it's a minimum, no matter what kind of business. You have a little corner store, you have a shoe shine shop, you know, your Lear company. You've got to have a minimum of three. And of course, you would think that larger businesses would want more cameras, but um, what would the bottom line cost for businesses to be to go out and um, buy a three camera system? So, 1200 bucks. So I've seen it as low as six hundred dollars mm -hmm. for the system. Um, cameras are really cheap now, uh, so as long as the resolution is where we would need to be to be able to clearly see an individual's face, is what's most important. Mm -hmm. But it's a cheaper technology, so I, I've seen it as little as six to eight hundred dollars. And most businesses in the city, especially the establishments that are listed, already have video surveillance. So it's only making the bridge between us and them. So it's not really a uh, an enormous cost or a cost at all in addition to what they're already paying. Okay, well, um, I'm sure that's true, but you know we are going to get complaints from very small businesses who say they don't have the money for this. So um, I would recommend along with this, we definitely need a public hearing to hear from businesses about their take on this at some point. And you talked about grants, maybe there would be some additional grants because those 300 um, cameras that you're talking about, those are not for businesses, right? That grant you've asked for? They're just for crime areas or? Okay, but no, but some of them probably will end up on businesses. Okay, two more questions. Um, as I look through the types of businesses that are required to have this. It covers most everything, but I'll tell you what's confusing. On page three, if you look at 15, I don't think I'm reading this wrong. It, I mean, you've got a list of, you know, up to 12 and you get to 13. I don't know what lumen is. And also- It's lighting. Yeah, the lighting, the dizzy, yeah, lighting. the brightness. Yeah. Um, but it's in the list of the types of businesses that have to have these cameras. So I don't understand no, it's how in the that's... definition section. This is a definition section. Uh, not on page three. Point of information. What's your point, John? It doesn't separate the businesses from the definitions, does it? That's what she's getting at. It don't say definition, do it? No, this says business established on page one. Business establishments or establishment establishments listed and defined as follows. So it goes up to twelve, right? And then I don't know. Thirteen is lumen. Fourteen is media. Fifteen is owner. I mean, it's that is really not clear that you're having to break into definition versus that's, that's, the type. That's of real buildings. easy to resolve. You just put a break in there. So thanks for pointing that out, and we'll fix it. Okay. And then my last question is, um, well, you kind of answered it before when I asked, is there going to be a fee for inspections? Who's actually going to monitor this? And I noticed you have a section for exemptions can be granted. Who will grant exemptions? What's the process? Well, the monitoring would be for the police department, just like when we do in these marijuana places. You know, we have to come in there and actually you know, make sure the, the system is uh, being fed into our system and compatible with ours. And we monitor their system. So if we decide to check where we're doing it, you know, um, so. Do you, do you anticipate that we might be able to have a sliding scale of an fees? For monitoring inspections like a very large company versus going out to Joe's Shoe Shine Shop? Sort of monitoring fees. We're really not interested in that because we're not charging anybody right now. It'll be something after we I don't mean ongoing monitoring. I mean going out to see does Joe's Shoe Shine Shop have a camera system? Oh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll have some additional questions about that as we go along. But uh, for the moment, and 
I would also like to see a written process for exemptions along with an appeal system, a written process. I, I would su suggest that before we get to that point, you read what you have before you because it talks about all those things. But I would take a note about that. But okay. if you could read this first, it would really be helpful because there's a lot of things that you were saying that are covered. Okay, thank you. Uh, I got up to page seven. Come from Greek. I read up to page Greek. Yeah. This comes from Garrett's. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so um, in regards to the cameras getting established, let me state the first of all how I feel about this. I think that'll definitely help the police to be more proactive and reactive uh, when cameras are because they're put in place. Uh, a lot of bigger cities do have cameras um, more available and accessible to them. Unfortunately, we do know that we do have lower manpower in the city of Flint. I think this could potentially uh, help, help reduce crime. Uh, so for my first question, you mentioned the connection um, and that they would pay for their own cameras. Um, however, would there be a fee, a monthly fee for them to connect to the Flint Police Department as well? I think that's what the chief is referring to that we would probably need to come to the table and talk about. Um, that connection is just uh, web-based, so it, it's not an enormous, enormous cost again. It's a web-based platform. You connect in with the same password that's provided by the establishment. And then actually monitoring at that point is pretty simple. You know you have a problem when the camera goes down. I can see that in the center, so it doesn't really require a lot in terms of monitoring. Okay, so that we have to figure out the process for that. Um, and then uh, you touched on facial recognition. You asked a question, I think it was, uh, can you explain that? Do we have major recognition available with this? So, so we do not at this point. Uh, that's something that certainly could be looked into later. But I think for a basis to get this uh, going, and so we go in that direction, we're not we're not focused on the broader scope of ability in terms of the, of the software or the platform. We're just looking at uh, getting it started. Um, and then. Uh, uh, all the footage would go to the Intel Center, um, which is very nicely set up. However, would the Intel Center be able to then dispatch uh, law enforcement to react if they see something fishy going on? Or would, they then, would there be a certain process that would just be used during investigations or looking at the videos that was a robbery? Or so there's currently a protocol uh, established in terms of what um, operators are going to see in the center and what they should do if so they're witnessing something that's taking place. We utilize Genesee County 911 services right now, so uh, those calls would have to go through the system through 911, notified by our center, and then cars would be dispatched from there. But at that point, we're already establishing evidence. We have video evidence. We're able to give um, more descriptive uh, descriptions of individuals or actors that may be involved in certain criminal activity. So we're already ahead of the curve where even six years ago, we couldn't do those things. Okay, so that would be, um, so in regards to calling through the county now that one, so if you see somebody having a heart attack or anything that's like a ne necessarily a crime, uh, that then call will go through, so it would also be helping with other issues potentially. But if they see a homicide being committed, right, or a robbery being committed, because we are tapped in the stores right now, then of course they can pick up the phone to call 911 and the car be dispatched because they spotted it even before the call went out. Because those cameras are all in real time. Mm -hmm. They're all real time. They're not cartoons or anything else. So, so there's no delay or stuff. Right? And in, in the center, we have uh, something faster than the telephone. Believe it or not, we're connected to the radio system, and there's radio systems in the center, which if the analysts pick it up, they're instantly on dispatch. So every medic, every police officer, be it Genesee County Sheriff's Department, State of Michigan, they're hearing it right then. So okay, it's and that's, like, that's, that's good to hear. Yes. So there's, there's no uh, <coughs> with going through dispatch without going through the county then? No. Okay. We're, we're, we're on the system. So. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And then uh, I know this is a, a graph you just stated earlier. Do you know when you're expecting a final copy coming from well, the council actually, from you? you know what? I, was on, I wanted to say something about that because what you're bringing up and actually what council and Phil brought up are really good uh, points when you're talking about inspections and fees. That's, a, that's why we're presenting it to you because we wanted you all to have input on that and make those decisions, the number of cameras based on the size. Those are things that we're hoping to get some feedback from you all as well before we do this. So we're just presenting this to you, uh, and it just depends on how quickly you can look at it and say we're ready to talk about this again. 
So we're, we will, like uh, Attorney Willis said, we're going to take back the information that we hear and start looking at that as well. But as soon as we can get some feedback. And any recommendations, if we go over and look through it, should we send it into the legal's office or to the mayor's office or to the police? What, what, what route do you want to send I was going to say we should send it to legal. Send to legal then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've already submitted the what I've heard tonight into my department, so we can start working on it. Awesome. That's all my questions I have. Thank you. Here's the way we got it. We got Councilman Mays, Councilman Briggs, and then Councilwoman Fields. Mr. President, yes, um, I've heard some interesting things too as I've listened, but we in special affairs. And um, I don't think I have to put it in the form of a motion, but I'm going to make a request. Hopefully there's no <coughs> objections. I make a request for this to show up in a, in a special order in legislative committee. Ms. Worthen, um, through you, Ms. President, and Ms. Worthen, do you have any objections uh, to that? No. I would ask that this be put as a special order on the next legislative committee so meeting. So what if we have objections? So that's what I would do for this. Um, I would say to the council that even though the mayor, Weaver, and the chief is proposing this, we have the final say to create and make legislation change and amend or whatever. And I'm thinking we headed in the right direction. This might be one of the first pieces of legislation we might all agree, but they might lose me. Y'all might lose me because I'm still researching the facial recognition. I'm an old-fashioned facial recognition type of guy, so we can recognize their face. If you see maids coming in and out of that liquor store, <laughs> Not necessarily a liquor store. I do that on purpose. But the point I'm trying to make is this. I'm still looking at that facial recognition. It's a lot of controversy. So you'll keep me with this ordinance as long as um, we don't move too fast on the technical term of facial recognition. The old-fashioned facial recognition, I'm okay with so I'm glad to hear that. Keep me posted. I would ask the administration and the police department if that camera and that technology change to implement that, let me know because I, 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 I'm hearing a lot of stuff about that and I ain't quite sorted it out yet. Ms. Fields, when we met, it is an appeal process there, but that appeal process ends up with the I think city administrator and or that doesn't need. I suggested that we might want a final appeal on top of that with the council. And so if, if, if we look at that when we get to changing and amending it. But I don't want to bog the council down with a whole lot of hearings and I mean we got enough. This new charter, y'all really don't know, but we got a we got a lot to do. And they done took our investigative arm and gave it to the ethics board. The ombudsman and the clerk was our appointee and we could ask for investigations and so that's disappeared. So I don't wanna get too bogged down in the appeal process on this. But we do have that opportunity, and I've thought about it. Um, when we first looked at something, I think it was Mr. Boot, or is it Sergeant Boot? Lieutenant Boot, Sergeant Boot? Sergeant Booth and I seem to agree on that change, and it was some changes that was made. So I'm looking forward to the council taking it and looking at it, and then coming back to the legislative committee and seeing when we get it done. And so we'll get it done. I appreciate the presentation today. And so I think this is a good presentation. But Chief, you know what I'm gonna probably do? Sergeant Booth, you know what I'm gonna probably do? Mayor Weaver, you know what I'm gonna probably do? They don't even see it coming. I'll do it. Tell me I won't do it. At the time we pass this resolution or before or ordinance, if we pass it, I'll put my motion back on the floor. I've been doing it for six years, Chief. Every year I put a motion to move $2 million 
to put 20 police officers on the street. I really want 21. I want seven additional per shift. And so it's going to happen. I don't care you think I'm going to lose sleep. I'm going to do it for the people of the city of Flint. I'm going to do it for the police department. When this keeps shaping up, and it might be before, I might do it today, but I'll put a motion on the floor to move two million. And the reason I'll do it is because that's why we're looking at technology is good, but you need boots on the ground. I think it was Mr. Guerra that asked the question, if you see something, do we send somebody out? Well, the problem is, if it's a shooting, and you got three cars tied up, out of the five, you got persons doing crowd control so they won't mess up the crime scene. You ever been out there when it's a crowd of people? You got police tied up for crime control. So I think they all go together. And um, Chief Johnson, Mayor Weaver, I'll do it. And I'll do it today, tomorrow, or yesterday. I came close this year. We had four yes and five no. One vote off of putting more police on the street. So in front of these witnesses and people, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put a motion somewhere, if not tonight, to move two million and put folk on the street. Because I'm kind of scary. And when I dial 911, I don't own guns. I want help. I want people to show up with guns. You a police or something now, ain't you a deputy sheriff? If I can't get a police, can I call you and you come with yours? I'm just telling you, that's how I know people is frustrated. Point, Mr. Chairman. What's your point? Uh, it's already gone beyond five minutes of our council rules. Ain't no motion on the floor. This is a motion. See, Mr. Griggs, I'm going to be quiet, but I'm not going to interrupt you, and I'm not going to interrupt nobody. If we get away from that mess, and just take care of business, Mr. Griggs. All them points of orders and rules didn't used to be here. Council people could talk. So I know y'all tired of me, and, and I see all of the facial expressions, but believe me, that ain't a good start. It ain't a good look. And so whatever y'all thinking, I'm going to see what you say and what was so important as I talk about putting more police on the street. That's number one priority, economic development. So Mr. Griggs is next, right, Mr. President? Let's see what was so important. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Uh, Attorney Wheeler said that we should be reading, or we should have read all of these before we probably ask him more questions. That's not true. Well, okay, what did you say about it's better if we've read it all? I think that's what you said. I said, like I said, the mayor, the chief were presenting this this evening. And like I said, this is the great first step towards the dialogue to get all these changes done. Some of the things that were spoken about tonight, they were already in there, realizing that you just got it tonight. So I said, maybe a good idea to read through it once all the way through so that you can have time to see what's in there. And also, I said that we already sent the questions or concerns that you had tonight already back to my office so that we can start working on those immediately. I was just going to suggest that I just finished reading all eight pages about 10 minutes ago, and I didn't know if any other council people needed some time to catch up and get you know, all these eight pages under it. Point of information. That's why we refer it to legislative committee. So we can do work. We got at least two or more. It, can, it don't have to pass to February, March, April, whatever the council chief. Did you realize that? Councilwoman Pills. Uh, just a couple quick questions at the end here. These cameras, uh, now, are bars and restaurants included in these businesses? I assume they are. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is the camera work. Um, would the cameras be high resolution enough to catch the license plates of cars leaving a bar at, I don't know what time the bars close, 2, 2.30 two or something? I don't know, 2. Would they, would they be good enough to catch the people who are leaving those parking lots? Because I would think anybody who sat in a bar drinking most of the night would probably be above the legal limit. Is this something you could pay a special attention to? 
So to, yes, there are cameras that are high enough resolution to capture license plates. Is it? I don't know if you remember that shooting that happened over the Cherry's Market, that was actually across the street. Myself and Sergeant Booth were sitting in the intelligence center, and this was before the center even opened its doors. And um, the shooting went out, and homicide happened. Uh, uh, the guy was pumping his gas, and the uh, guy pulled up, got out of his car, shot and killed him. He got back in his car and drove to the road and got out of there. Well, the next day we were standing in the intelligence center, and we were talking about the shooting that had happened. And I, and I asked him, I said, don't you hear the market have cameras on? And he said yes, and he went to the cameras, and he pulled it up. We were able to get the vehicle, the guy's description, the camera caught it off. And that was just a blessing from God that the camera was pointing in that direction. But why it was pointing across the street, I don't know. It should have been pointing on the business that it was on, but they caught everything that happened at the homicide, and that guy was arrested a few days later. If that camera had not been there, we had, we had no witnesses, and nobody came forth to say what happened. Because actually, when he was pumping gas, was out there by himself, no other cars was in the gas station. And that camera caught his vehicle and caught him and took a picture. And I'm not, I don't recall if it caught the, plate, the license plate number, but it was enough for us to go find him. And that's exactly what we did. So to ask your question, yes, ma'am. Well, I, I think that case was fortunate, but we know there have been quite a few incidences on bars after hours I mean, when people are leaving that there's shootouts. And uh, I, in the past history, there have been. And well, since mm -hmm. you can prove that bars must have these, having those, extra copy that trap. the high enough resolution to catch those license plates should be very helpful catching people who are drunk and are driving and are getting in their cars after the bar. That's all. Thank you. Okay. You got yeah, thank you, Chief. Come on. Come on. For this presentation. And we'll look at Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This brings us back to Thank you, Thank you, sir. Oh, I'm going to put a motion. I'm going to see what they do. I'm going to tell you who these police and who don't. We're going to see. He's supposed to be. Was he there last time? Huh? You voted yes for the police? Okay, I'm going to find out who's left. I'm politics. Yeah, I was comparing and making sure it wasn't something separate other than Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, Quincy Murphy, resident, brought up the issue of the strike that's going on, going into the fourth week. Last week, I brought up the strike, and we are so hungry for our city council in Flint, the home of the great sit-down strike, to take a position on this strike. And I'm, uh, it's very frustrating to have to come here and ask for that. And we're talking about crime and all these things, and the best thing to fight crime is a good paying job but there's no position from the council on the strike. Hmm. That's the not technology and all this, good jobs. That's your number one crime fighter. But if you, if this strike is lost, the whole agenda in here is gonna change because this city is gonna be dismantled. Economic development, good wages and benefit in our 
community's largest employer is economic development number one. So I'm going to read this simple resolution and hope that you as a council can find it in your heart and in your spirit to take a bold step and stand up with these brave and courageous GM employees. Resolution to stand with striking GM workers. Whereas a bankrupt General Motors Corporation was bailed out by the U.S. taxpayers in 2008, most of which, if not all, has been repaid. And whereas the city of Flint, since the 1970s, has afforded General Motors millions of dollars in tax abatements through the Michigan Public Act 198 and other corporate friendly laws without living up to the job promises that they made. Whereas the UAW men and women who work for General Motors have sacrificed wages and benefits including pensions, in order to ensure that the company recover from the Great Recession. And whereas, in the last three years, GM has made a record profit of 35 billion, yes, that's billion, would it be, dollars. And whereas, the UAW is now on strike. The UAW is now on strike to recover their losses while General Motors seeks to go after health care and maintain the quote-unquote new normal of a two- and three-tier wage system in the face of labor replacement through technology as well as global expansion. And whereas this 2019 UAW GM strike is a forerunner for the future of our community and all who labor, both union and non-union alike, against corporate inhumanity. And therefore, be it resolved, the Flint City Council declares its unwavering support to the resilient and courageous UAW men and women on strike in their fight to win social and economic justice. Mr. President. Yeah, Mr. President, I would move to label this add-on number five and um, I would move point to of the order. Council. What's your point? If that was under public speaking, Councilman Mays can't speak right. until what was that under? It was a special order and agenda change. It came out to the mayor. I would move to label this add on number five and move it to council. There's a motion on the floor. That's two. Councilman. Should we add a number six? I said add a number six. I got number five. Well, the mayor brought an item. I got four. We can make the next one number six. No, that's still an add on. Just an add on to it. So we have an item. We only have four. We got four. Yeah, so this is five. The mayor brought five was an item agenda. So I have to give it a number. She didn't well, know. No, that just five. went to this legislative. Five. Right. This we, we referred her yeah. for yeah. this to this legislative. She just did a present. We're referring to two legislators. So we should put another item. I have to give it a number because you talked about it and you moved it. Y'all gave it a number. We didn't know. So if it helps y'all, have you repeated my motion yet? Not yet. Okay, I'll withdraw it and start over. So let's get the record clear. The 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 um, ordinance y'all put is add on number five. The sample ordinance that the mayor brought. Even though we ain't taking action on it, other than it's, it's going to um to to. to yeah, so I mean, if for record keeping purposes, you wanted to file a document. Okay, so if it's for that purpose, even though we ain't taking action on add on number five, we're going to designate it for this record for this meeting as add on number five. Okay, so I would start the motion over and say I would 
designate this resolution to stand with striking GM workers as add-on number six in this meeting, and I would move it to council. Mr. President, for approval. I said it's been moved and properly seconded that we, we say this is add-on number six, the resolution to stand with the striking workers and send it to council. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. This brings us to public speaking. Are there any um, are there any folks in the room standing outside of the room that would like to address this council? Yes, sir. Would you please begin the clock? Mr. Mitchell, go ahead. My name is Earl Mitchell. And I want to speak on this uh, number six with the add on with the mayor about uh, this General Motors situation about all uh, this pol pollution stuff. In 1955, there was a man called Mr. Uh, Oh, oh, I forgot his name that quick because anyway, I spoke to him today at McDonald's. And they were throwing chemicals in the water to kill the cocks because they was putting pollution waste in the, in the brick and then, and they got out the feasters, Mr. Feaster, and the, and the cameras called him. And the people's threat, it was a whistleblower, but they didn't, they didn't let it go. Way back then before the water, well, Don Early got busted way back then. And Mr. Clinton was right about these new normal order people out there striking in General Motors. We done bailing them out. That's the people. We the people and y'all. The we people act like they don't know what they're doing in Flint like we dumb Flint stones in the wheels all over again. We the only people in Michigan got a waste using Flint River as a reservoir and, and nobody saying nothing about it. That's all I want to say. Thank you, sir. Are there any other <coughs> speakers for yeah. the council? Uh, come on around. <coughs> no, I don't want to come around. <laughs> well, don't black hey, uh, out camera. Hey, uh, no, uh, what I need to speak about, I got out my car today. Black in that oh, my fault, my fault. I got out my car today, and every one of those uh, uh, meters out there have cameras and mics on them. DDA did not ask me that I want to be seen. Who's monitoring those cameras and that voice or whatever going through those meters? I just spoke to the chief. The chief don't know anything about what's going on with that. So I would like for you all, or somebody to investigate this, make me an uh, 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 envoy or whatever you call it, so I can go down there and talk to him because this needs to be taken care of immediately because I don't want my face where they can do something or sell it to a third party or whatever. They should have came here first and asked y'all because they put these cameras out here on Saginaw Street. I don't appreciate it. I mean, I'm serious. I'm seriously upset. I'm serious. That's straight up enemy of state uh, Will Smith type stuff there. I mean, seriously, man. I, I mean, man, I got chills right now thinking about that. And when I got out the car, it's looking dead in my face. Mr. Branch, uh, I need to ask you a question. We was over at the uh, MCC Mott, and they said, you know, they was talking about poverty, the unemployment here in Flint, 22%, and then they had a, a, a data about the median, and they said the median here in Flint is $733 in Flint, but they use a Genesee County low-income median, and that's what they're doing for all the housing here. But under the HUD bash, which is like a Section 8, if I was a veteran getting uh, Section 8, I could only get $454. So when they're building these apartment complexes, I can't get into these low income because HUD bash only pays $454, but the city is using $733 me. So I got to go stay in a, 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 some type of... A, uh, all right. I, 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 point of order, Mr. President. <laughs> I didn't say nothing because it was Mr. Woodson, but really, if you really know our rules, your communication is going to be directed to the council. You know, he got an office. We ain't got much, so you get him all the time. Who? Mr. Branch, but really, under the council rules, the conversation is to the council. Yeah. Any other public speakers? Laura McIntyre. Um, 
I'm standing up here today to speak for myself, but also for someone who's not able to be here today. Keyshawn Wade uh, is a graduate of Southwestern High School from last year. He's currently at Cornell University, and I've been in communication with him, and we've been actively writing a document about the surveillance that is happening um, in the cities. Uh, in the city, and uh, last week, the NY published an article about the cameras installed in Flint neighborhoods. Um, he says, as a resident of Flint and a recent graduate of Flint Southwestern, the last public high school, and a former resident of the Howard Estates, um, he's, and we are, as a, as a group, there's some other students as well, and some other citizens, uh, community members, were concerned um, about the supposed high crime areas that are being targeted. It's one thing to talk about bars and resident or businesses, but it's another to talk about residences, specifically low income, predominantly black areas being surveilled for, well, we, we have more to say about what they're being surveilled for, but we're really concerned about this. I mean, talk about enemy of the state. It's, um, it's, it's kind of concerning. Um, we're enraged um, about the, the details in the article and we're sickened by the responses that are made. Um, uh, I have a statement that is, like I said, is being worked on, um, but it was reported the majority of people living in these neighborhoods are happy with this new form of surveillance and I want to state for the record that is, that is not the case, that is unequivocally not true. And I think people need to be asked before cameras are put in places where they are living and raising their families and just trying to make a living. Uh, I would question the results of this unscientific, uncalled survey. And I would, we would go even further to point out this type of uh, reporting, uh, whitewashes what's at play here. The surveillance is so supposedly supposed to be a safety measure at first glance. Okay. But it's just a poorly veiled attempt to marginalize the poor and communities of color, and we're really concerned. we're not happy with this. We don't want surveillance. We don't. We definitely don't want facial recognition software. Um, like I said, I'll, we'll keep working on this document, but just so that we get this on the record, this is not okay in our community. Are there other public speakers? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. um, Quincy Murphy. I just want to piggyback a little bit on. Um, what well, um, me and Claire McClendon been working on. Uh, I want to first thank you guys for moving into um, city council. But I would um, um, ask you guys to take into consideration um, some of those um, laid off workers and also um, those. Um, and it's going on one month. A lot of them got water bills, utility bills, car notes, house notes, a lot. So, um, if you guys could do some or do all things necessary, the uh, favorite quote that you guys use sometimes when y'all need to get something bad, to do all things necessary to help these residents who are facing shutoff notices on a water bill. If y'all can waiver the um, shutoff notice temporarily until after the strike is over with because they have a lot of other bills and a lot of us who got laid off or was on strike um, actually probably thought we was going to be going back to work for two or three days or something. Um, so they live in check to check and then on 250 a week or 275 they just went up $25 to have to pay their water bill consumers, the phone, keep food on their table, car note, insurance, all of those bills, they probably in a struggle right now. So if you guys could do something to give them some relief on any kind of shut off. I'm not saying they can shut off status, but some may or some may be facing shut off status. So if you guys could do something to try to help them, that would be really um, helpful. Thank you. Okay. Any other speakers? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I want to speak all about the camera. You going to tell us who you are? Oh, Gina Lester. Um, I want to definitely speak about the cameras. It, it's, it's definitely a mixed um, feeling about it, but me being a victim of a crime on um, Fenton Road five years ago, pumping my gas at a uh, pumping gas at a gas station. I worked down the street in that plaza and uh, had just cashed my check and went to get some gas at the gas station. And a guy, I had my window rolled down about 
just enough for her arm to stick through. I'm pumping my gas. This guy comes out of nowhere, sticks his arm in my window, and I'm more mad because my purse was worth more than how much money I had in it, but took my purse and ran off. And a group of young ladies and I ran, we jumped fences, we, I mean, we went after this guy. Couldn't catch him, went back to the gas station. They didn't have cameras. Saw Flint City Police truck, so I guess it was not just a regular officer. This was in the last administration, I want to make that clear. This was five, six years ago. Um, and they told me they were surveillance, surveillance and the drug usage in that area, and we know that's a really high I had old people OD in my store when I worked over there in that plaza, uh, drug area off of Fenton Road. But they couldn't assist me in the robbery. I'm sweating, dripping. I got three, four young ladies with me. They couldn't address it, and no cameras. So I say that to say this. Yes, it is a kind of big brother thing, but it's needed. And until we able to address the other issue on why that we're having these robberies, which is an opioid, crack addiction that's way before opioids, don't get it twisted. Crack been out there, nobody wanted to address that, they just wanted to lock us up. But since now it's an opioid, crack, heroin, all that, until we address the real bottom line issues, and I know my time is up, um, the cameras are needed. Thank you. Any other speaker? Yes, sir. I want to uh, piggyback off of what Ms. Field said about the license place thing. I hang with criminals. They finna put masses on to do crimes. So being able to get them license places is going to be very, very important. Because a lot of people are going to, and then... What's what your name? Uh, but the license for, for real though, the license place are gonna be very good on um, people know how to dodge cameras. You can be seen in cameras, but if you don't go in the store, they're not gonna be able to mess you up because if you do if you do something at night. So it's, it's, there, it's good, and as far as the bad neighborhoods, of course, the people that don't want to get caught are going to say they don't want them in their neighborhood. <coughs> but a lot of people want their kids to go outside and be able to play again. So the cameras are the, cam the cameras are necessary. I don't know too much about seeing other people like because some of these houses, like my neighbor has a camera. And she can tell me everything. I don't, I don't even have to lock my doors. All I got to do is go over there and rewind the cameras. I can see who came to visit or all of that other stuff. And I don't feel that a person who's a law-abiding citizen who don't have a drug house, because there's only like one drug house on the street, I don't feel that they house should be included in, that, in the vision of the camera. But city property, all fair game. So what I mean by that, from the sidewalk on, should be covered. Any other speakers? Council members? You all know we got a council meeting right? Yeah. yeah. So I saw Mrs. Fields, Mr. Guerra, Councilman Davis. I'd just like to say in response to uh, Mr. Murphy's concern, I'd like to make a referral and ask for a special order on legislative uh, to discuss the uh, possibility of coming up with a temporary ordinance to keep striking workers from having their water shut off. Okay. You want that on, you ask for the, you want it on legislative? I'm good. Are you good with that? So order without objection. Council, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, just uh, in regards to uh, thank you for that. Uh, in regards to the cameras, I, I think it does make a difference when you are from those high crime areas. I grew up in the north and Flint, and the amount of people that feel like they can just do drive-by shootings and keep going away with it is insane because there's no cameras to catch them. They know that people might not report it because they don't want to be the next victim. 
Uh, so I think that these cameras, especially in my ward, uh, would definitely help a lot of residents feel safer. And touching on that, that subject, that I remember as a little kid going and playing outside, and you would see, you'd see the car chase, you see the car chase happen right in front of you. Uh, and you, 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 just, you know, drive by and seeing all these crazy things happen that most people don't have to see. I have to deal with, so I think that this can maybe help eliminate uh, some of that professional crime in that area and will make it feel safer for residents to go on a walk outside, uh, walk their dog, uh, let the kids go play at the local park. Uh, and I think that would be a, a good step forward. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Wilson brought up a good valid point about being videoed without permission, but have you ever thought about when you drive down Miller Road, Expressway, Pearson Road, they got cameras there. We don't know. I don't know who watching. I don't know the purpose of I me. Mean, if somebody do know, I'd like to hear who it was. And also with Miss Jean, I think she's bringing up a valid point. The cameras got a pro and a con. That's automatic given. But me being in business, I've been tried on Dayton Street often. I got a couple bullets, spent bullets. My, I got bust with bullet holes. I got a house with bullet holes. In. But the thing is, I have caught a couple people. I put my gun in their face. I couldn't get a police. But if if they was aggressive, I had to kill one of them. That camera would have played a very vital role of who came and assaulted who. You, you follow me? It's a two-sided corner of that. I carry a gun. And if I catch you, I don't want to have to go to all the attorney, which I would have to. But at least you'll see that you came and you, you snuck me. I got light and all the other stuff, tactical stuff. But it's a two sides to that coin. You got to be able to protect yourself legally when somebody run up on you or jump in your car or your van. So it'll prove that, you know, it's not an argument that this victim was the suspect. You brought up a good point. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other councilman? That's so good. You, you, councilman, with regard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh -huh. President. I would like to speak on, um, just to piggyback off of what um, Councilwoman Phil said, I certainly do um, support an emergency ordinance to um, help with the strikers, you know, to keep their uh, water on and anything else that we could possibly do to assist them. Councilwoman um, I guess I have a referral for legal about DDA and the cameras. I, I don't know, it's another entity now. We're not controlling them. But what is the uh, legality of it? Did they need to come to council for something like that? Because even if it's their, uh, you know, their thing, it seems like cameras are, that's a big deal that would need to go through some sort of a new body. Um, if not, maybe we need to look into that. I personally don't agree with those cameras. Uh, what are they using them for? Uh, why weren't we told about what was happening? I mean, I guess I think that uh, Mr. Woodson brought up some valid points. So I mean, later at another time, if you can just yeah, tell I would, me. I would have to look into that. I just know there are, I just generally think across the country, there are a lot, of, a lot of cities that are kept safe because of all the cameras that are around. And I don't think they necessarily tell you where the cameras are, but I do know that with this um, ordinance, there would be a basically a demarcation in the store that says these are approved by the Flint Police Department. So, so there is notice to the public that you are being watched. They can't be covered or concealed. You will see that the cameras are there when you come in, when you're at the register, when you're in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like ones. Yeah, I know. Is it two ones? Yeah, I know. We got to move. We got to move. We got to move. We got to move. We got to to move. We got to to move. We got 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 to move. We got
Yeah, I just want to say before yeah, it gets into it, we have a meeting on Wednesday. If we want to address that at that time, we can do that. So that was a point of information that you know we had a meeting on Wednesday. They said, no, I did not. So that sounds good. So that means we got an opportunity. Um, I would just like to say I always thank the speakers. We got a lot of people out there on a specific subject matter. I hope when y'all get out there and y'all see who these speakers is, you let me do the agenda change to accommodate them. But for the speakers in here, I'll address you as we speed through this and continue to move forward. Mr. President, I'm done. Where did I get that from? Where I'm done. This brings us down to our resolutions. What's the what's my colleagues? Uh, yes, sir. Make a motion that we send um, the resolution one nine zero four two nine and the additional add-ons to council. There's a motion on the floor. I send that all resolutions to council. Is there support for that motion? I support. There has been a proper support. Uh, is there any discussion on those? Yes, Mr. President. Council. I'd like to separate out add-on number four which is the state of the city. We had asked for information about the cost of Our having the state of, order, of the city. Point of order. Just separate it and let's talk about it when we get to the separation. Is that okay, Ms. Fisher? Four. Four. Okay. Are there any other separations? Um, Mr. Mr. President, since they're just going to the um, floor, what if we also do an amended motion and move 190239 and 190323 to council as well? <coughs> Council members, there's support. There's a motion on the substance motion on the floor to add the ordinance to 190 and 190 323. Is there support for that motion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there support uh, for that motion? Mr. President, it's been moved properly seconded. Is there any discussion on that? Yes, sir. Substance? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I actually wanted to speak about this, so I want to separate out 190323. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Are there any other separations? Hearing none, all in favor of sending the resolution and the one ordinance to council, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, saying sign. Okay, this brings us back to the separated uh, point of information. Uh, point so the one that was separated was yeah. 19023. 323. 323. Yes. That's the one that should have been separated. Yeah. Yeah. And this brings us then to uh, number four. Number four? Yes. Okay. Um, we had discussed this uh, in committee. And the information we had requested, I don't see it in our packet. We had asked Mr. Branch to provide us with the, <coughs> any cost that's associated to having this at the capital, the state of the city at the Capitol Theater <coughs> versus the cost of having it here at City Hall. Has Mr. Branch prepared that information? I don't see Ms. Lewis here anywhere. Just I have the cost. The cost to have it at the Capitol last year was three thousand one hundred and fourteen dollars and fourteen cents. And where did that to Mr. Branch through you, Mr. President? Yes. Where did that money come from? Came out of the mayor's budget. Where out of the mayor's budget? The mayor's budget, professional services. Professional services. We had to pay for the union reps at the Capitol Theater to set up and run their equipment because that is a union job. So we had to pay their wages. No one else could do that equipment but right. the Capitol Theater. And so what you're telling me is you're supposing that it will be a similar cost this year? That is our anticipation. Maybe less this year because we went through it once last year. 
Okay, could I just ask you, how much total is in the line item mayor's professional services? Um, I believe we budgeted $30,000. $30,000. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, how are you done, Mr. Yes. Mr. President, President, I would move add on number four to council for approval. There's a motion on the floor to move add on number four to council. I second that. It's been moved and properly seconded. Is there any discussion on that motion? Councilman Griff. Moving it. To council. Well, I've got a question. I want to know how much it costs to have it here. I know it's 3000 at the capital theater, but how much does it cost? Have us, us, the, the state of the city address right here in City Hall. Okay, maybe we'll try to get that before we right. get out of here tonight. Oh, uh -huh. is that okay? All right, any other discussion? Councilman Field, Councilwoman Field, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I think the council member's question is very good, and uh, I personally can't support even though it's not a huge amount of money, it's unnecessary money. There is no reason why. As in all other years, all other administrations, the State of the City Address can't be held here in this auditorium at City Hall and not at the Capitol Theater. So I certainly will not be supporting that. Okay. Mr. President. Any other discussion on yeah, that motion? I Please. will be voting. I hope we got five votes here to move right. it. To, it was at the Capitol last right. week, and it wasn't no election year, and nobody said nothing. But because it's an election year, and because the Capitol is what it is, I've got... Miss um, Deborah Holmes from the senior center. She called and lobbied and wanted it because they came in walkers and everywhere. Right. And so, you know, let's see what happens. We sometimes can get political when we don't have to. It was there last year. We didn't have this discussion. This is an election year. People can't support it. Let's see what five council people do. I'm ready to vote. Any other, any other discussion? And I would just like to say. And I believe, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. I'm almost certain that I'm right. The, 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 the theater itself and the seating arrangements were a donation by the Capitol Theater That's last correct. year and this year. That's my understanding. And yeah. we had over 800 people attend. You can't put 800 right. people out here. <laughs> Any other discussion? Councilwoman Worthy. Um. I don't think there's any difference here than there was in the Capitol as far as uh, accommodations for handicapped. Um, also, we didn't have a choice last year really. We weren't given a vote. It just kind of happened. It wasn't brought before us. That was my first year on council. I had no idea it was a council meeting. I felt real si silly from the audience saying, uh, I. Uh, and uh, <coughs> conducting business from the audience instead of a normal seating arrangement for a council meeting. It was kind of like we were an afterthought and that it was more of a rah-rah campaign session. I'm not going to support it either. We can have it here, zero dollars or three thousand um, dollars. It's, it's not a campaign event for the mayor. It's the state of the city and I, I, don't, I don't see why we need to, to go there. And plus parking, the, the parking was horrible. I, I, I mean, if you are handicapped, how were you going uh, to, to get there? I had a hard time finding a spot. Um, in any case, um, I'm not hoping for it. Mr. Okay. President, yes, yes, real quick, quick, let me chime in. Oh. I thought you were the rest of the session. Go ahead. Councilman Garrett. Yeah, so um, I, I do have uh, looked into this a little bit more and had talked to a lot of the seniors who attended last year. Uh, and uh, I think that knowing it's coming out of the mayor's budget anyway for professional services, I think it's, it's good knowing where the funding is coming from. However, I do know there was a lot of people that attended it last year. Uh, and the bus station's right there, and a lot of seniors were able to get dropped off. And I spoke to, I think, Mrs. Holmes from the Brennan Center. Uh, and then looking at parking wise, parking is easier to park down in that area because there's more spots available than here at Actual City Hall. Um, so I just keeping that in mind, I, I think that it definitely will remain a council meeting. I hope that the administration keeps that in mind. Um, however, this is definitely going to be easier. I think more residents even there, especially having people help sit people who are disabled uh, in certain seating locations like they did last year. So for the senior citizens, keeping them in mind, I think it's going to be less Well, we're, we're conducting this. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he gets the first council meeting. For the young council people, I'm a senior council. I can wait. No, go ahead. Go ahead. If you would like. 
Well, is it going to be conducted as an actual city council meeting, or are we just going to be like audience members shouting from the audience? I mean, is this going to be professional, or is this going to be another, it's a mayor show? That, that's what I'm concerned about. It's a council meeting, not a rally. Yes. I'm asking a legitimate question, responding. actually. Okay. <laughs> and that's kind of what I was going to touch on that I went first, so I'm going to answer your question. It's in fact a council meeting under the charter the mayor and or two council persons can call a special meeting. You probably always want to look at the time and place that's posted when the mayor and or the city council call it. But if the council didn't show up, you wouldn't have a quorum. And so there would be no meeting. And so when you look at the past um, state of the city addresses, they don't even go like regular council meetings when they're held here. We don't really put anything else on the agenda. It's just go through a process of the state of the city address, and then we vote to accept it, so forth and so on. So I would say it's a council meeting. If five of us don't show up, it won't probably happen because it won't convene. And so that's why it's important to get a feel and input. And that's why it's going to be important to see if five or more vote for that location. I recommend it that it come in resolution form. It's here. I haven't read it. I'm going to vote to move it to council. I hope five of us do. And we can get more into it out there. So I'm ready to vote. Uh, Councilman Fields and Councilman Briggs. I just want to point out that, as a matter of fact, we can accommodate the disabled and handicapped much better. Um, there's actually an elevator that can take them up. There is um, part, and we can designate one side on either side over here. We could designate that for walkers and wheelchairs. Uh, it just hasn't been done before, but it certainly could be done at no extra cost. The parking, there's behind the dome, there's behind there. There's parking all over the place. Um, there's the county parking. Um, I think there's actually more parking and less traffic and less hassle. And um, I can't support three. I mean, times are tight. Times are very tight. I can't see spending $3,000 for no good reason. Councilman Briggs. Uh, I just seem to see the state of the city address in writing, either in the front journal or I don't need to sit in an audience. To, I mean, we do it. I mean, we do the same thing with our budget. It's a lot bigger deal than the state of the city. I, I'm done. Councilwoman Winter Carter. Uh, and Mr. Griggs, I would just say that that's just to me, just you know, disrespectful. But anyway, let me get on with my point. I would say that we should take advantage of that $5 million Capitol Theater and have the state of the city address at the Capitol Theater. I think it would, it's a nice touch, and I think it would be more um, accessible. You know, the seniors could get there, more parking, and it's right downtown Flint. So I'm all for having the um, address at the Capitol. We're going to utilize that $5 million. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of sending it to council, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Nay. Nay. Next separation. We have, a, we have a separation that's 190323, Councilman Fields. This is what I would like to say. We have not passed this for first reading because we keep being told that this is the Ethics and Accountability Board bylaws that has not been put in the proper format to the city attorney. Is this the same ordinance that's been on here for, I don't know, six months or more that we keep told, being well, told it's not I'm not going to answer your the question the way it is because that's really dramatic, six months or more. This is the ordinance that's put before you, and we just need to get the numbering on it. That's really the long and the short of it. So, like I said, we've worked very hard on this, and that's why it's on your agenda for you to review. Any comments, glad to hear them. Haven't heard them. But anyhow, you just need to change the numbering on there. That's the one thing going to work with Ms. Donahue on. Mr. President, I would like to say that I, I think it has been that long, and I'll actually find out when the Ethics County Building Board submitted this. 
I think it has been at least six months. And um, all the, next time, if it's not been six months, I'll acknowledge how long it's been. But it's been a long time. Okay, it's been a long time to have on the agenda that is still not in a format. And I am just asking that, uh, once again, we have to postpone this because it's not in the correct format. So instead of sending it to council, I would like to have this postponed till the next special affairs or the next legislative, let's say legislative, in order to be able to see this in the correct formatting. Ms. President, I would second the motion to postpone. I didn't put it in the form of a motion. Yes, I did. You put it in the form of a motion? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I missed it. I was waiting on it. Uh, it's been moved to send it back to legislative. legislative. Is there support for that motion, Council Mayor? Ms. President, I would second that motion. It's been moved and properly supported. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mm -hmm. I would too. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> I know, I know. Go ahead. You know, you, no, never mind. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of sending it back to the committee, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, something signed. Mr. President. Council Mr. President, can I let Mr. Griggs do this? Mr. Griggs, it's time for that motion. No, it isn't. It's new what? business. What? It can be done. We, new business. The Amanda. Oh. Mr. Griggs, Mr. President, through you and Mr. Griggs, we could do it. If we didn't want to be nice, we could do it. But, you know, look at your colleagues. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just give up the flow because I'm a nice guy today. But you know I ain't really nice all the time. We've asked on the agenda for some new business, but first I'd like to make a motion to postpone these discussion items. There's a motion on the floor to discuss, to discuss, to, to postpone the discussion item. Is there a second, Jasmine? The move to probably second. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Do we need to discuss it? I want to discuss the discussion items. What discussion items? Oh. The, the fired homes. Are you, are you postponing that? I was in Point of information. You don't want to postpone Point of information. Oh, well, then, if she's postponing the motion, then I'll postpone the discussion for that. Sorry. Well, since now she give up the floor, may I? There's going to be some discussion out on the floor. We got some resolutions with them, so you'll still get a chance out on the floor if that agenda is correct. And so without further ado, I'm going to be nice to you. Because I've been the maker to give a degree. We read yeah, we aren't. Yes. Hold on, hold on, Councilman Mayor has the floor. Just as you're hearing, I know it's going to be discussed on the floor, but I don't want to postpone it and then repeat it if there's a right discussion. So can we postpone the, a substitute motion, postpone that to discussion with the motions on the floor? Yes. Or, because they're like drop them, make fine. a motion to drop them. If not, we're going to have to send it to you. There's no point sending it back to committee if we haven't. So okay. Our substitute motion has postponed this discussion. Two, we discuss it on the floor at council meeting. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Support that motion. I support that motion. Any discussion on the motion? Okay. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please signify the same. Uh, new business. It's on the agenda. What is your new business, Councilwoman? <laughs> okay, I actually have several. Uh, one. One. Because you weren't paying attention, didn't write it down. Okay, number one, um, I believe that this council should do something in the way of some type of uh, proclamation uh, recognizing the contributions of William White. Uh, to the city of Flint, and I don't know formally what we can do, but I'm sure the city clerk. Okay, all right. So I wanted that one covered. Uh, number two, I have a referral for blight. On that one, will you make a referral to the clerk? I just did. Okay. Number two, regarding blight, I'd like to request a special order in government ops to ask Michelle Wildman from the Land Bank and the um, uh, Deborah Cherry, who's chair of the Land Bank, to come for a special order to discuss blight removal on Land Bank properties. I've heard that 80% of the individual houses that have blight 
uh, their land bank houses. So we need to discuss what's being done. I'd also like to make a referral to planning and development. Point 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 you want me to do it one right. at a time? Because I got to sure. Did you, get Did you get the first one? That's so ordered without objection. Okay. Now, no, no, Ms. Field. Just trying to speed it up. I beg your pardon. Okay, the second referral to Blight, I would like to know the number of tickets, Blight tickets that were written by the NSO officers two weeks prior to the policy change that put took five Blight trucks off the road and paired up NSO officers, two of them going in the same truck. I want to see how many Blight tickets were written two weeks before, and now this has been going on for two weeks, two weeks after, so we can see how effective this policy change has been. That has been ordered without objective. Okay, uh, number four, three, I think, three. Uh, I'd like a referral to the assessor's office. I would like to know the SEV of all the houses that the properties, I believe there are now seven properties that we own, that are actually on this, tonight's agenda to transfer. I'd like the SEV and whether any of those properties owe money to the city in terms of water bills, any other kind Point of Point of information. There's 18 of them. Why don't you just get all 18 of them? 18 of them. 18. <laughs> Eighteen. And my last one is I would like a special <clears throat> order in finance to talk about purchase orders and why we have over three hundred and fifty purchase orders sitting there. I would like uh, Joyce uh, McLean to be present to answer questions and Timar Lewis and Steve Branch. I am hearing that on, 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 on what committee? Finance. Finance committee. That is that is that is so ordered without objection. Proceed. I am hearing that we may not have the money okay. to pay these bills, and I'm very concerned about it. So, if we can't do it tonight, we'll do it in finance. To pay what bills? Any bills. Okay. Mr. President. Councilman Mace. Through you to Mr. Green. Yes. If I may yield to Mr. Griggs. I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn. There's a motion on the floor to adjourn this meeting. Is there support for that motion? I'll support that motion. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say aye. Listen, I would like to start.